Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now it's all about the starter diagnostics on Garage Ed today. And what's better than a whole starter board laid out here where we can see everything? Oh, I know what's better. Tom joined us from rockauto.com. Tom, this is a cool starter system, man. Tell us how it works. Yeah, you've got everything here. You've got the battery, sends power to the relay that sends power to the solenoid that then turns over the starter. Give it a spin. Works well. Could have voltage drops though. That's something we want to check with starter systems. Voltage drops are important, Tom, and, and they can be deceiving. Why do we want to measure voltage drops? Well, you got a good wire there. If you pull that over here, I got our meter set up of ohms of resistance. So if we go across, what do we got there, Tom? About 0.1? Mm -hmm. All right, that's a good wire, wouldn't you say? Sure. What about that? What do you think of this wire? Not quite as good. Not near as good. It's, it's, it doesn't look good at all, but yet it's measuring identical, the same thing. Why is that? Got that little strand of wire there that's enough to conduct some electricity. So. Exactly. We're talking about continuity. That's voltage drops. We want to actually measure voltage drops because current has to run through there. That'll be a huge fusible link. You can give me a hand. We'll do the positive side first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the positive of the starter and perfect. You're going around the positive cable. You've done this before. <laughs> Go ahead and run it. Let's see what we got. How about... 0.2, that's fine, that's acceptable on the positive side. Now, if we had more, we'd have to go track it. I mean, Tom, you could move over to the solenoid. You want to go to one of them terminals right across there, and I'll go to the other one. And if you want to go ahead and bump it again, we'll look at the meter. We got 12 volts, go ahead. Not even a tenth, okay, so there's nothing there. Now, if there was, it would be a solenoid issue like this here, these contacts. If these contacts right here are not touching, or it's dirty, you know, you got problems with it. You said there's multiple components that can go bad here. Mm -hmm. Now let's do one more thing. Let's get this off of here and let's look at an amp draw. All right, and this is pretty cool because I got an amp meter right here. I'll spin it over to amps and I'll clip the thing. And Tom, if you'd hold it for a couple of seconds, you're gonna see a big initial hit. And that's nice. So we had initial hit of about 100 something and then it dropped down. What if I had a mechanical draw on the starter that's gonna cause amps to go up? What would cause amps to go up on a starter? Having the engine attached there. That yeah, that's, that's going to do it for sure. <laughs> Having the engine attached, mechanical draw on the engine, thick oil, shimmed wrong, something that's causing this thing hard time to spin that causes amp draws there. Now, the other one is electrical resistance. Tom, I'll tell you what, why don't you get the rockauto.com website set up and I'll talk a little bit about shimmed. Sounds good. All right. Now we got an engine over here. Shimming's just as important when you shim an engine because what happens, you put the starter in, it has to be by the fly one, it has to be right. And I'll show you a good demonstration of one that's not. So if I spin this thing right here, watch the pinion come out. First of all, the sound is horrendous. That's not good. And second of all, you can sit there and you can see it spin back and forth. So what you want to do is you want to go get you some shims and you want to put some shims in the starter. Okay, you get a high pitched sound a lot of times when the keys release, da 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 da, wing! It's usually too close and you need to get it further away. Now, if it's whining, wah wah wah, when you're starting it like this one, it's probably too far away. You want to get it a little bit closer. Good tip for you. If you don't, your flywheel is going to end up like this one right here. You can see it's all eaten up in here, it's all chewed up right there. And that just gets worse and worse and worse. So you want to address that. Shimming, it's important. Keeping your starter clean is important. Making sure everything's all right or you're going to have damage to it. Let's check in with Tom. I think he's got rockauto.com set up and ready to go. Tom, we talked about the importance of shimming it. I mean, you actually offer shims on rockauto.com? Right, we do. If, it's, if it worked fine when it was new and then it, it stops retracting the, the, the gear adequately or, or, or extending it adequately, then it might be time to get a new starter. Yeah, and that's huge because the voltage drop is causing that starter, counter electromotive force, there's all kinds of cool stuff going on, but it's getting way too much amperage because it's burning it up. That's what's happening. That's not good. So shims, I mean, just replace the starter, the bearings, the old hammer trick, remember, bang, bang, bang? Yeah, yeah <laughs> make sure your wiring's good, that the voltage, what you just demonstrated, yeah, you don't want to damage a brand new starter or replace parts you don't need to replace. Yeah, and we'll tie this in with alternators next week, Tom. Stick around, though. There's plenty more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com right after this break.